from print to practice is more than honored to help prepare you to study Arabic and become proficient. In the previous blog, we discussed the main ingredient needed to excel in studying Arabic, which is fluency in reading. This is needed before you start your studies. In addition to this, there's something else you must possess. You must possess a strong desire to excel in Arabic, a deep desire which is not easily uprooted by difficulties and intimidation. Your goal and objective must be built upon a firm foundation of determination which is impenetrable. Your ambitions must soar high in the sky beyond the stars. These are some of the provisions you need on your journey to learn Arabic with proficiency. In the time we live, unfortunately, learning Arabic has become a difficult task. Although numerous students embark upon learning this beautiful language, a small percentage excel in it. Due to this low success rate, we are often astonished when we find someone who excels. As we say in amazement, a student over here has learned Arabic, and a student over there has memorized the Quran. However, we are not surprised to find those who spend much more time achieving their goals, such as doctors, engineers, or specialists in information technology, IT. The history of Islam, however, bears witness to a phenomenon far more amazing. That is none other than the remarkable spread of the Arabic language throughout parts of East and North Africa, places like Sudan, Egypt, Libya, and Tunisia, to name a few. Not only did Arabic become predominant in these lands, but Quranic recitation was also perfected. As a result, these lands, which were originally non-Arabic speaking, became centers of learning. The light of Islam emerged upon a generation of Muslims who embraced Arabic and Quranic studies tenaciously. Thus, they accomplished their goals most outstandingly. The point is that if we want to succeed as they succeeded, then we do not need to reinvent the wheel. Instead, we need to follow in their footsteps. Learning Arabic at that time was no doubt different from now. For one, studying Arabic at that time was a collective effort. When students combine their efforts and study in groups, it simplifies the learning process and strengthens their understanding. Moreover, it eliminates intimidation and procrastination and has long-lasting effects contrary to studying individuals. That which further promoted the spread of Arabic at the beginning of Islam was their purpose and objective in pursuing it. The teaching of Arabic was for Allah and the upliftment of his religion, not for monetary gains. Knowledge was available to all who desired it, not limited to those who paid for it. Those who teach Arabic for money have limited its potential and restricted its magnitude. However, when Arabic was taught for the sake of Allah to those who desired it, it caused it to spread rapidly in numerous countries. From Mecca and Medina, it spread to East Africa, in Somalia, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Eritrea, Sudan, and Chad. In North Africa, it spread as far as Algeria, Morocco, and Mauritania. The spread of Arabic among non-Arabs helped to produce the biggest scholars of Islam, such as Imam al-Bukhari, al-Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, al-Nisa'i, and Ibn Majah. Moreover, the most renowned scholar of the Arabic language, Sibawe, and his top student, Al-Akhfash, were both non-Arabs. Until now, non-Arabs have not ceased embarking upon Arabic and becoming scholars. The most renowned scholar of Hadith at this time is none other than the Honorable Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin Al-Albani. May Allah bestow his mercy upon all of them. Just remember, you benefit from your religion due to the hard work and sacrifice of others. They exerted themselves, exhausted their efforts, depleted their wealth, endured great pains, spilt their blood, and traversed through the land so that the light of Islam and the knowledge of this religion would reach you. Now you are presented with the opportunity to study this historical religion. It's an honorable task to undertake, but it requires dedication. 
what have you done for Islam? Dedicate yourself with the most honest convictions and the firmest resolution and pursue your goal. May Allah aid you in your endeavor.